do it. Hey, welcome. You ready, Jim? Yeah, let me mute. These people are talking too much. <laughs> hey, give, give me a countdown, like three, two, one. All right, you ready? Okay, three, two, one, go, William. Ooh, hey, welcome, everybody. <laughs> My name is William Friedman. I'm and, Jim. <laughs> and there's Jim. Hey, uh, we're, we're coming to you live tonight. I'm in Sandpoint, Idaho. Jim, where are you? I am in San Antonio, Tejas. San Antonio, Texas. Yes, wow. sir. Guys, hey, thanks for giving up part of your Friday night to be with us. You know, we know because you are here that, that this is important to you. And it's important to us. And that's why we're here every week. And we're here to share with you a discovery, a discovery so important and so um, life-changing that literally the entire world deserves to know about this. And tonight we have two really amazing guests. We have Dr. Lee Osler and founder and past president of the American Academy of Oral Systemic Health. Wow. And Dr. Bill Williams, author of two number one best-selling books. Hey guys, both of these gentlemen are top in their dental profession and they will be giving us their perspective on why they believe ASEA will change the way we look at healthcare. And you guys, you know, this is something new for them. And it's just been a matter of months. And let me tell you, because these guys are involved in, in research, they know how to research and they did their due diligence. We're going to hear a little more about that tonight from both of them. And so we're excited to have them. Jim, are you ready to roll? Yes, sir. Let me do the share screen. We'll be right there. Hopefully I can find it. This Feel free to take notes, get this down on paper. It's gonna be a treat, guys. I see a lot of pictures of me. You see all these famous people, wow. We'll have to get Dr. Ralph uh, on again. That was a lot of fun. Nancy Walker, yeah, let's get Nancy on. Mr. Jerry White. Well, as we're getting a tour of Jim's computer, this is uh, <laughs> this is quite entertaining and fun. I promise you, uh, Dr. Bill and Dr. Lee are coming up right now. <laughs> yeah, you're good, William. Okay. Hey, guys. Welcome to Friday Night Discovering ASEA. Guys, tonight we have two very special guests and uh, two doctors, as a matter of fact. We have Dr. Lee Osler. Um, from Washington State, and we have Dr. Uh, William Williams. We're going to call. Uh, we're going to say Dr. Bill Williams. So I'm going to refer to them as Dr. Bill and Dr. Lee. You guys, thanks for being with us tonight. I know you guys have incredible backgrounds. Uh, Dr. Lee, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit more about your background, and and really uh, after that, give us an idea of how how you ended up here, how you discovered. Uh, this uh, this stuff we call ASEA. Well, thank you. It's uh, a pleasure and an honor to be with you and to share the platform with with uh, others here, uh, especially my good friend Dr. Bill, who we'll uh, we'll talk about in just a minute. But my background is I'm a general dentist. Uh, I, I practice in the state of Washington, uh, uh, south of Spokane, a couple hours, and so I know there's a good uh, group of our colleagues up there working. And um, I came into uh, into this because of my wife. Um, she, uh, she had an incredible experience where her, some of her health history, she's had a couple of tumors removed doing some cranial based surgery and uh, probably spent 30 years in uh, some tough, tough health situation. And my, uh, and her physician uh, directed me and said, I think you need to get her onto some redox signaling molecules. And this was last year. I didn't really understand what that meant. 
And so I did a lot of research and uh, found uh, people like Dr. Maureen Hayes, who helped me understand and, and uh, explain it to myself as well as to my wife. And uh, we began that with her and had an incredible uh, experience with her inside of probably 20 or 30 hours. It was just, it was within a day and a half. She just kind of woke up and was ever since kind of been a new person. Two uh, weeks after that event, I, I wound up at a science meeting, the American Academy for Oral Systemic Health, which is the other part of my background. I'm a past president of that organization, sat on the board for five years and really helped uh, get it established and get a foothold in this country. And prior to the meeting, I decided to do uh, a little more research because I'm not involved in the meeting itself anymore. And so I got online to figure out who's speaking and who the exhibitors were so I wouldn't look foolish uh, showing up at the meeting unprepared, I guess. And I saw that uh, a CEO had an exhibitors booth there and that we were joined with the American College for the Advancement of Medicine folks. Um, Dr. Avi Hershowitz, who's a cardiologist and stem cell person in San Francisco, was going to be there. And so I, I wound up going there and learned a lot about uh, redox biochemistry, uh, learned about uh, cellular health, the gut detoxification, and, uh, and really uh, the, the dots connected, the lights went on in my mind, and I, I suddenly understood the, uh, the science side of it and why it mattered uh, both in the general health sense as well as in an oral sense. And we did us, we have, um, we have a particular fondness for wanting to understand the science as well as, as, as most physicians do. And, um, and so it's been an interesting um, discovery of jumping into PubMed, which is the, the science um, uh, library, if you will, for um, you know, everything health and wellness. And discovering almost uh, you know, just short of 20,000 articles have been written um, and published uh, relating to redox biochemistry. And so uh, that's when I uh, reached out to Dr. Bill, my good friend of 20, 30 years ago, and introduced him. And he's, he's been a part of uh, AOSH as well. Again, AOSH is the American Academy for Oral Systemic Health. And I was on the program committee and even invited him one year to come speak to us because he has some incredible business skills of, of how to market health and how to help educate uh, patients. So that, that's kind of a quick flyover. Um, fantastic. That, that's absolutely fantastic. Wow, I, I want to hear more about that in a second. But let's, let's introduce uh, Dr. Bill Williams. Uh, doc, Dr. Williams, uh, Wow, I've heard great things about you, and I know you've done amazing things in your life. Tell us a little bit about your background, and and I know it was Dr. Lee that told you about this uh, this opportunity, uh, this product. Give us an idea of how that came about. Thank you, William. I'm glad to. My uh, career started in 1975 as a dentist, and I've been uh, practicing here in Atlanta, Georgia area that whole time, and I found that over, over the period of time, I was drawn to uh, study the uh, oral systemic connection, the uh, action of the periodontal tissues and their inflammation and all that related to the body. And so Lee and I have been together in study clubs for many years. We've, we've uh, met every six months for 10 years in a row in one particular study club. And then we got together at the AISH organization that he helped found. And, um, I learned a lot from, from that and became uh, a proponent, really, of working with physicians and working with other healthcare professionals to try to understand all this effect of the inflammation on the body. And so we share a lot in common. Uh, I've, I've trained with um, a lot of the people in head and neck pain, uh, TMJ, neuromuscular dentistry. So my background was teaching dentists for many years back in the 80s and 90s. And then uh, recently I've, I've gotten involved in, in helping dentists improve their practices. And so I work hard to uh, coach dentists and consult with dentists as well as we're still working in my practice. So I'm splitting time between those two things. And then along comes a see a redox and, and, and it adds a third thing to my wish list 
of things to do. You know, I'm, I'm pretty well strapped for time, but I found time for Redox because I saw in it from listening to Lee's story, first of all, I would not look at any other uh, multi-level organization because I've been in 10 of them before and I know exactly how they work. And I, and I know that if you have a lot of competition for the same product, you get drowned out by the competition and there's always something new coming along. So when I heard Lee's thing, there was something unique. I go, well, this is worth looking at because the story that he told was something that has never been told before. It, I mean, it's like the discovery of penicillin for, for infection. Wow. It's something huge. It's like the study, uh, discovery of how to make insulin for the diabetic. So this redox is beyond the norm of an option for people to jump into. It's, it's a business opportunity that will not come again in another generation. So I, I look at it that way from a business standpoint that those who are involved now and understand it now will probably be able to sit on uh, rocking chairs for quite a while. I love it. That, 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 that's, that's great information. Great information. So are, are we saying that you guys both recognize this as, as, as a new paradigm as it relates to oral health? Uh, yes. I mean, I'll jump in there on that one. One of the things that we dentists who are attuned to this inflammation um, paradigm or this worldview that we're focused on is that the mouth is a source. It's a, it's a contributing cause for what we call whole body inflammatory burden. That just means the, the degree of burden of inflammation throughout the whole body. You know, for, for many, many years, uh, healthcare has looked at diabetes and cardiovascular disease and brain disease and strokes and kidney disease and so on and so forth, um, that they're all linked somehow. And the common thread that links them is simply uh, inflammation, that your body is on fire. Uh, there was a great cover uh, story in the Newsweek magazine in 04 that, that kind of heralded this new discovery that inflammation was the source of the commonality that drove all of these diseases and was the common link. And then we showed up inside dentistry and said, well, hey, wait, you know, gum disease and sleep apnea and through these issues, that is a source of this inflammation. And so we started to, we started to target, we started to look very closely at the contribution of, you know, bad bugs in the mouth that cause gum disease and gingivitis and their entry into the body, into the circulatory system through infected guns. And we, and we said, well, we have a role to play as oral health professionals to basically, you know, shut the door to close the entryway for the bacteria to get into the body and, and to decrease that source of inflammation. We're not the only source of inflammation in the mouth, but it's a, it's a significant one. And so we've been looking at that. And again, one of the things that, one of the lights that went on for me um, at that meeting I was referencing earlier was in learning that redox signaling molecules, which are the molecule that our immune systems use in regulating the immune system, they are also what we call biocidal, meaning they kill bacteria, and, and most importantly, they're selective, and they kill the bad bugs, and they leave the good bugs alone, which is why the physicians are just crazy over this with the use of it in the gut for gut health is because they help to restore a healthy balance of bacteria in the gut. And in my mind, looking through my, my glasses that have dental written all over them, I looked at that and I said, well, wait, if that's good enough for the gut, if, if we're selectively killing bad bugs in the gut, why not the mouth? That's the other end of the, of the GI tract. If these selectively take out the pathogens or the bad bacteria in the mouth, that is really a phenomenal thing. And in the world of dentistry, we don't have anything like that. I mean, it's not just dentistry, it's oral health. You walk into any drugstore, Walgreens, Rite Aid, wherever your grocery store, and you look at all the mouthwashes, all the options that you have that are supposed to kill bugs, and they're what we call indiscriminate. They kill all the bugs, even the good bacteria. And we've got to have that healthy play of good and bad bugs. And so when I saw that, I thought, this is this is like, like Bill was saying, this is you know, the, the first 
the first thing. This is like penicillin or insulin or whatever when it's done because we don't have any agents that we can use in clinical dentistry or just to recommend to people using at home that doesn't harm the body. It's non-toxic and yet it takes out the bad bugs. And so that was a big deal. That And, and that plus the idea that that redox signaling molecules are neutral in terms of their pH, their acid-base balance. That means that they're safe to use in the mouth. They're not gonna etch teeth or remove calcium from the teeth like you'd expect to have from soda pop, for example, or lemons or you know anything like that. And so those, those features made this a, a, a doable to be used in the mouth and to support oral health. That is a big deal when, when we're starting to see now uh, papers coming out linking the bugs in the mouth to Alzheimer's and, and brain amyloid deposits and endothelial dysfunction, which means heart attacks and strokes and things like that. This is a really major deal. And so if we can, and if we can stem it in the, in the, in the mouth, you know, at the, at the uh, earliest stages by using an agent such as uh, redox signaling molecules that kill the bad bugs and at the same time support cellular health and regeneration, those two features come together to make this a real winning uh, proposition. Well, that's 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 really uh, <clears throat> that's amazing news, actually, actually amazing. It is. You know, one of, the, one of the things we don't want to forget about too is the accelerated wound healing that occurs in the presence of the Redox or the Redo Twenty Eight. People report often that wounds heal much faster, more comfortable. And even intraoral wounds, extra oral wounds, skin integ is the uh, epidermis or the mucosa. Either one will heal faster under the influence of being in the presence of these molecules. Fantastic! You know, both of you guys have been involved in in research and and extensive research, in depth research, and education in your fields. I know that Dr. Bill, you have traveled all over the world extensively, uh, training uh, uh, folks in, in dentistry and oral health. Here you guys are, both of you, um, highly established and, and know how to research. You guys know where to look, right? And you know how to look. Uh, I remember in a recent recording where, where you were sharing that uh, often there can be a, a misconception or maybe uh, a misstep made where we don't necessarily uh, uh, look at research uh, or we've been trained to look at research in a certain way and maybe there's a different way to look at it. How, how did you guys look at the research? What did you guys look at to make this real for yourselves? For me, you know, one of the things that uh, for 10 years in the arena of oral systemic health We've, we've been plagued by the idea that there's no, there's no smoking gun. There's no absolute definitive placebo, double-blind you know, studies that, that conclusively prove this. And, and that's, that is the, that's like the scholarly um, mark that's been, that is set out there. And we're actually all trained. All health professionals are trained that way to set these studies up to make these conclusive proofs. And the FDA requires that type of research in order to approve pharmaceutical medications or things where medical claims are attached. Well, we don't have any, but we have, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of articles that show that, oral, that, that diminished oral health or bacteria produce inflammation and that inflammation produces all of these other diseases that we talked about. It's like an A, B, C. A causes B, B causes C, but we can't quite make the leap and go A to C directly. But the preponderance, that just the sheer volume of uh, research that's out there that ties all these dots together is really important. And I think that's an incredibly important story for us here because redox dentistry, this is a new breakthrough. Redox um, uh, signaling molecules are new on the scene. They, it was just, it's just a recent development and it's going to be another 10 years before we have the depth and the level of, of these types of studies where A can jump straight to C. So in the meantime, we have to depend on the preponderance, the, the high quantity of research that just talks about what is it and how does it work. 
And fortunately for us, we can talk about structure and function claims because of the supplement nature of redox signaling molecules. Therefore, anyone that comes along and has an understanding of the basics, understands how, how electrons move and how, how health is restored through the immune system, understands and they can put the dots together in their own mind because they know this foundational science and that it works. And I think we have to be real careful. We can't overstate the claims. We can't make um, you know, unapproved claims, but we know the science well enough that we can make these, these um, statements about how it works and why it works, and then the dots connect together, and people, and that's why the, the, the testimonials are so important in this space, is because once you see, it was like what Bill was talking about earlier with regards to these physicians having um, good test results, and it's like, well, they understand it well enough, you know, they don't need a placebo, you know, double-blind placebo type uh, thing to prove something, because the science is so well established in this. That, that's great. That's great. You know, I remember, I remember initially, uh, and I haven't been around, but maybe over a little over halfway uh, uh, through the process of where we are today, meaning uh, five and a half years, we've been out nine years. And, and there was a lot of anecdotal information, a lot of uh, anecdotal stories that were very powerful. And, and they began to, um, to, we began to collect those. The company began, I know Virtus himself saved these in this treasure chest in his office. And, and I remember when the, when the gene study came out uh, a year ago this past September, I remember that uh, uh, it was shared that Virtus was very excited because uh, they were, and, and you know Virtus, right? He's so organized. So he, he corrugated uh, or, or, or connected all of these anecdotal stories and, and, and managed them in a file. Uh, uh, and when the, the gene study came out, he made the connections. Look, there's the connection. It's over and over again, uh, we've made all of these connections. And, and how excited were you, Dr. Bill, when you looked at the gene study and, and, and saw that, wow, this is actually affecting the genes? Yeah, the, the pathways that are opened up to be more efficient speak volumes to, to us doctors. When we see a study like this that says that the immune system and the circulatory system, the digestive system can, can be upregulated due to the effect of this redox molecule, it, it, it takes the lid off of possibility. That's the thing I noticed. That there's nothing that would stand against the improvement of an individual because whatever's broken gets fixed if you're working in so many pathways. You know, the body is a complex whole, but this, this particular molecule works at the level of the complex whole. That's the key. It's not something that's a single specific bullet that hits one place. It hits everything. So, so it's a beautiful a job and design. Whoever designed it did a good job. Because we're approaching it from, uh, from the inside out, right? At the deepest levels. We're talking at the cellular level, at the genetic level. And you're right, uh, you know, who does, whoever designed these bodies did, did <laughs> right, an amazing job. And so we actually have the power in, in a bottle, in a stabilized form, bioidentical in every way to the same molecules that our body produces naturally that we can replenish and and allow our bodies to heal at levels that that we we've never seen before at least not seen before especially as we get older right That's so it's isn't it isn't it almost like we're setting back the hands of time uh, from a healing standpoint yeah, let me jump in there on that one because I, I want to follow up with what Bill was saying. We, we have this understanding that if you could think of a, of a, uh, of a triangle, and at, at the top of the triangle, at the peak, uh, we, we think of the body, which is made up, you know, the next level down is, is made up of organs, which is then made up of, of tissues and cells, and within the cells, we have metabolic pathways. We have, we have molecules moving around that are all, it's a coordinated dance, if you will, that is driven by the DNA. And, you know, several years ago, the Genome Project was finished, and we've, and we've uh, 
you know, a multi-billion dollar industry was born of all, all things DNA. Uh, you know, DNA kind of is the center place now, and, and it's even moving into personalized medicine where we can uh, get your DNA and figure out, well, what do we need to do specifically with you because of that? Redox signaling shows up one level below that. And this is to me what, what, what echoes what Bill was saying, because this is, this is the epigenetic level below or overlaying the DNA which are the genes that have the instructions for life and health and healing and growth and so forth, overlaying or even underneath all of that is the redox signaling. Something has to communicate. Something has to signal gene expression where genes actually turn on or turn off and do the things they were supposed to do. And, the, and these redox signaling molecules are manufactured in the body, in the mitochondria largely. Well, the problem is, is that from puberty on, every decade, we lose, they say, about 10% of our mitochondrial efficiency, which means we're aging, we get wrinkles, we get sicker, and we're not performing at our best. Our cells aren't as healthy. They can't withstand the, the, the stresses and the toxins and the stress and so forth of life. And so these cells will undergo what we call oxidative stress. And anytime oxidative stress kicks in at a cellular level, the genes will then turn on because of redox signaling molecules that detect that stress and start to manufacture things. And these things that they're being manufactured are proteins. And that's what the immune system is all about. And again, alluding to what Bill was saying is that on our best day, you know, on our most healthy day of our life, we have optimum levels of these redox signaling communications happening so that our genes can express themselves in positive ways and stay and keep us healthy. And that's where this redox signaling breakthrough is so important because we now can combat or we can go upstream, if you will. We can fight the, the forces of aging and the ravaging natures of disease processes. We can now go back to and, re, and supplement our body's ability to function at, as it did perhaps on our best day. That's what's so unique about this. So, not, so when, when people say, well, you are your DNA, and it's like, no, you're not. You are your redox because it's the redox that drives the gene expression. Wow, what a, that was a great explanation. Absolutely great. Both you guys, that, that was super. You know, I... Uh, it, it kind of blows me away to think that you guys have uh, only recently discovered this. Uh, and, I don't and know it, why that took so long. I wish <laughs> it would have been 10 years ago. You know, but it's only been a few months, right? Isn't that right? That's right. Yeah. And in a few months, you know, I can, I can feel your conviction. I can feel uh, the fact that you, and, and I can hear the fact that you've educated yourselves, that you get it. You, you guys get it. So here's the next question. So here you are, you're, you're fairly new at, 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 at wrapping your heads around all of this, but you've already taken it to, a, to the point of uh, beginning to educate others about this. And so would you mind sharing with us and the new people that might be here, people that haven't been around that long, um, what, what would you say, how would you describe, and, and I think Lee, didn't you have some slides that you could perhaps pull up and share with us. How, how, and you created these slides and you have a way now of educating people about what this is, right? Um, I do, if I can figure out how to do it. Okay, so in the, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a green share button. And then you should be able to highlight your slides. I see. There's the there's the pyramid, the triangle that you were talking about. Well, let me introduce you to my wife first. Awesome. That's great. This is what I was referring to earlier. Hopefully, I can get that out of the way there. Yeah. Um, in April 26, this was a picture of her, and this is basically uh, her. This is typical of her for many many years. And what's her name? Dr. Her name is Bethany. And by the way, she's happy to allow me to share her story. That's why we put this slide together. Awesome. Um, 
she she's had some very complex health history um, surgeries and um, debilitating illnesses and we the story as I mentioned earlier we were with her physician I'm basically saying look she's plateaued I we kind of like, what else can we do and he very reluctantly kind of out of the sight of his mouth because I think he was just discovering this said, well, uh, give her some redox signaling molecules. And I, that's where I said, well, what's that? And he told me to go research it. That was October, about October 25 when we started. And within what, uh, November 15th, uh, just two, two and a half weeks later, uh, that's what she looked like. It was just marvelous. It was very quick. And on December 1st, we, we went to the movies and I looked at her and I thought, wow, I have my wife back. And so I took a picture of her while we were standing out getting popcorn. It was one of the first times she's put on makeup in a very long time. And uh, we were walking into, the, into another store at one time and she looked at me and she said, you know, I'm not depressed anymore. And I said, how do you know? She goes, I am not depressed. And I, I, I know, but how would you know that? She goes, I feel joy. So I haven't felt... I do not feel sad. I haven't felt like this in years. So anyway, this is really what grabbed my attention. And you know, bless her heart, she's doing the best she can. But um, she's not a hundred percent. Obviously, you, you know, this doesn't. Uh, this isn't about resurrection. This is about trying to make people uh, uh, be as good as they can be. So anyway, that was her story. And uh, you know, I, I just share a few slides if if you if you wouldn't mind. This is what we shared recently at a health professional conference in Chicago. And this is just a quick flyover if you've got a moment, but this is, the, this is the concept of oxidation. This is what redox is all about. It's, the, it's when we have an oxidizing agent like oxygen, for example, it's a high energy molecule and it wants to steal electrons off of other molecules. And in doing so, if it's a DNA or if it's a protein or if it's a cell membrane, it steals those electrons and destabilizes whatever it steals it from and damages them. And that's why oxidation is not a good thing uh, on the whole um, in, our, in our bodies. And so we have reducing agents, so we call them antioxidants, because they have the ability to lend or to give up an electron to satisfy the thirst of the oxidizing agent. And then in turn, that antioxidant reducing agent itself becomes oxidized, and the oxidizing agent then becomes a safer reduced form of itself. Now, there's an important concept here because we have all turned to plant-based antioxidants for, we, we've known that word for a decade now, and it's, it's a very, or more, because we, we want to have vitamins and antioxidants and trace minerals in our, in, as a supplement. The problem with a plant-based antioxidant on the whole is that it's a one-to-one -one ratio. One, one antioxidant molecule can reduce one oxidizing molecule. And then I have to have a new antioxidant molecule to do the next, the, the next reduction. Inside the body, we have glutathione. And when glutathione is upregulated in response to stress, back to that epigenetic genetic expression, when a cell is stressed and glutathione is made, it can run this cycle over and over and over hundreds of thousands of times. It replenishes itself. And so it's a much more, it's much a more um, um, powerful, in fact, we call it the, the master antioxidant in the body is glutathione. We know about, you know, common things of oxidation like uh, metals in the yard. Uh, we know when we cut fruit, this browning of the fruit is simply oxidation and that we can, we can prevent that by giving it some uh, citric acid, which has ascorbate, which is a reducing agent, and that keeps this fresh. But in the body, we have what we call biological rusting, if you will, which we call oxidative stress, which is the source of aging, the neurodegenerative, cardiovascular, inflammatory diseases. This is just basic, basic oxidative uh, science, uh, redox science. This is a, a more busy slide, but basically the free radical oxidants at the top um, cause uh, oxidative damage in the cell, which damages our mitochondria, the DNA, the cell membranes, and proteins that run around. And so, again, this might be a little over most people's heads, but, um, but this has a strong implications for um, what goes on in the body. This is what I just um, mentioned earlier, this epigenetics at the bottom 
is about uh, the root cause. When we get down to the root cause, we can find the root solution, and we can then rebuild everything as it, as it goes up. Some people say, well, where are these redox signaling molecules coming from? They're made in the mitochondria from saline. And these molecules of sodium chloride and hydrogen and oxygen, which make saline, which is salt water, along with nitrogen, which is in our, in our uh, body, are recombined, uh, they're fractionated by the mitochondria, and they recombine to form you know, upwards of a couple dozen different molecules that are the signaling molecules that our body uses to do this genetic expression, to kill bacteria, and to perform the functions of the cell machinery. In a, in a kind of cartoonish sort of way, this is what it looks like. That's a mitochondria inside of a cell, and its job is to produce the ATP molecule that is where energy comes from. That's how muscles contract and your heart contracts and your brain stays alive. And it's out of that, that mitochondria there, that we produce these redox signaling molecules that are the reducing agents as well as the oxidizing agents. You have to have both of them so that we can balance uh, health in the cell and kill bacteria and activate the immune system. I'm going to skip past this one. Um, this is a busy slide, but it's an important one because this is, this is where redox supplements really kick in. There's two transcription factors that are activated when we have oxidative stress. One is called nuclear factor kappa beta, NFKB. It's a phase one or the initial uh, first responder to the, to the presence of superoxides, hydrogen peroxides, and other oxidants. And this moves to the nucleus where the DNA is that actually then initiates the response of inflammation and proteins that we call cytokines that actually do the work of our immune system. The second responder, the phase two responder, is NRF2. This is the, this is a, 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 also moves to the nucleus along with the NFKB, except for in the presence of redox supplements, which have the ability to, uh, to go without the nuclear factor kappa beta. Why this is important is because NRF2 is a transcription factor that, in, that initiates the production of the glutathione and the other um, agents such as superoxide dismutase. Those are, I know I, I might be getting a little technical for some, but the health professionals will understand that this is the pathway that upregulates native or endogenous or self-made antioxidants that we spoke of earlier. And these can happen in the presence of redox supplements without initiating or having to have initiated the toxic inflammatory pathway of the, of the former. So what this means is that when we have stress in our bodies, when from our environment, from diet, from uh, mental instability or whatever, when we have this diminished cellular functioning, um, we, uh, it's going to produce the cell dysfunction. A good analogy of this is we all live in homes that produce waste. We have, we have uh, smoke, if, if you will, but when it gets out of control, the fire breaks out and we have to call in the fire department. Inside the body, when everything is in balance, we have a balanced redox situation. We have reduction and oxidation in a balanced, healthy way, maintaining the health of the cell. But when we have, when we have uh, oxidative stress or, or uh, toxins enter the picture, then the triangles that you'll see there in the picture is the movement of stained transcription factors moving to the nucleus to activate them. That's our scientific proof that we are living in a toxic state. And so what this looks like is that we have the presence of glutathione and these other antioxidants, but when we have oxidative damage, there's gotta be a signaling process occur that calls for materials and labor, such as vitamins and antioxidants that are in our body to come to the scene of the fire and fix it. And, and as we've said before, the redox signaling is what makes this, it's what makes the signaling occur and activates the antioxidants. And so this is an important thing, and I'm gonna go back to what Dr. Bill said earlier with regards to vitamins, where there's a lot of good vitamins out there, a lot of companies that sell good vitamins. I don't hold anything against them. What I enjoy about this is it's, I don't have to prove other people's vitamins don't work because redox signaling is actually the means that makes them work better. It's what activates them. 
So whatever you're doing, whatever your diet is, whatever your exercise program is involved, whatever your health challenges are, the presence of having extra or restored redox signaling is actually what activates those fix-it crews to come in and actually do the repair that we're looking for. Um, looked at in a different way, and then I'll conclude with this. Um, in the cell, we have both reductants and oxidants. Those are both there. They have to be in balance. And when they get out of balance, the one on the right shows there's more oxidants there. That's what signals the cell to do things to repair itself. And so the process here is that we got to detect it, we have to defend it, we have to repair it, but when we can't, we have to have the ability to kill the cell. This is a process scientifically called apoptosis or cell death. It's a programmed cell suicide. Without the ability to, through redox, to be able to identify this state, we would not be able to get rid of dysfunctional or bad cells. You can think of cancer as an example of this process. So that now, when this process happens, there's also signaling that goes to the, ne the neighbor cells to subdivide. It's a process called mitosis or cell division. They're now being asked to cell divide and replace with a healthy version of themselves what we took out through, through uh, the, the cell death above. And if this process doesn't happen properly, we have disease and sickness show up. And so from a scientific point of view, this balance, this reductive oxidative balance is so critical. And when it doesn't happen properly for a number of a zillion reasons, the body has to have a way of identifying it and taking action. So that might be all we really need to go through. We can uh, stop sharing. And if you've got follow-up questions, we can go there too. Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, that, that went really deep into the discussion of what's happening on a cellular level. Uh, I, I think that's fantastic. And, and it really helped clarify and, and, and helped me visualize what's going on, you know, inside my body as it relates to oxidates, oxidative stress, right, free radical damage. And I really loved what you said about uh, oxidants and how an oxidant has a one-to-one -one kill ratio, right? Well, an antioxidant that is plant-based. Yeah, is, that's what I meant. Yeah, antioxidant. In my food or it's a, a nutritional supplement. It's a one, it's, yeah. it's what we call exogenous, it's outside the body. The okay. endogenous or native antioxidants are the glutathions and the superoxide dismutases those have the ability to regenerate over and over and over, and so they're very much more powerful. In fact, one of the things that we found in our research with this is that glutathione is increased up to 800%, and superoxide dismutase, which is what takes hydrogen peroxide out of the picture and converts it to oxygen and water, has the ability to go up 500% in the presence of redox signaling molecules. That is a stunningly important um, observation because it distinguishes why at a root cause, root solution level, at that epigenetic level, this is so critical for health everywhere, in every cell of the body. And it's why we yeah. see such a wide, a wide array of health improvements when redox signaling molecules are supplemented. So that, that, that NRF2 pathway activation which you said activates and increases the per body's own production of glutathione, superoxide dismutase, and catalase, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're really doing something to affect oxidative stress, which, which that, that's what's leading to the inflammation, right? That and is, leading that's what to activates all those cytokines, those protein. That's what starts the DNA making the inflammatory response that's at the root of of a wide number, probably 75% of chronic health issues have inflammation as their base, and they're all preventable. So this is no small deal. This is, this is a, wouldn't you consider this a major breakthrough? It's a huge major breakthrough, and, and back to Bill's point on the genetic studies earlier, this defines the mechanism of action. When, when you have improved insulin signaling, when you have hormone modulation, when you have endothelial uh, uh, improvements, which is the vascular wall, 
the implications of that, and it's like now you can connect the dots. It's like I don't need to tell you the specific diseases this fixes because if you understand those things, you go, oh, now I get why this is so healthy and helpful for me. And that, that sort of begins to explain why we're seeing such dramatic improvements with people, and it doesn't even seem to matter really what's going on with that. Well, we have to, I, I would give a caution here because, you know, I, I've been on these redox signaling molecules as, as long as my wife has, and I didn't have the dramatic uh, effect. I'm kind of a healthy person. Um, you know, the, the margin from where I'm at to health is not very far. I, I'm pretty healthy. Well, she's not. And so some people have this false expectation, I think, and sometimes we do them a disservice by, by telling them you're going to have this marvelous surge of whatever. I mean, I felt a surge of, of energy. My mental clarity improved. Can I, can I dare say that my poop changed? I mean, because of my gut health. I mean, there, there were some things, but it wasn't dramatic like my wife. And so right. uh, we have to be careful because this isn't about fixing all this stuff. We're, we're not out there. That's not our message. Our message is that we're restoring the way the cell works. And when that happens, whatever's downstream of that will get better. Or what if, I'm, what if I was 100% healthy already? It's like, well, this is going to keep me there. And, and in that regard, this is the fountain of youth. This is anti-aging. It keeps me, doing, it prevents all those things. And people say, well, I, you know, I, why would I do that? And it's like, well, because there's a dozen diseases out there you don't want to get. Yeah, exactly. And preventative medicine is, 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 is it, it's a big medicine in this country and really around the world. So, yeah, uh, people yeah. kind of say, well, maybe I can check with my doctor first. You know, it's like, you know, as yeah. I've heard people say, it's like, no, the, the, the time you should check with your doctor is when you're about ready to order in the fast food line, you know, re ready to go. So that's when you should ring up your doctor. This, this isn't one of them. That's why this flipping this from the pharmaceutical side, which is where the foundation of this started, to the supplement side allows us to be able to talk this way. It allows us to be accessible to the consumer in ways that they, it never would have been able to be. This is a godsend to us, I think. Yeah, uh, this is fantastic. Uh, you know, just fantastic information. Uh, doc, Dr. Bill, let me move over to you because I know that uh, uh, Einstein is uh, someone that interests you. And I heard you share something, and, and I didn't quite get it, uh, maybe clearly. Uh, would you share what you shared? Uh, uh, I guess it was last week. Uh, I, I shared a quote from Einstein that uh, I think it was the one that said the, the, the physician of the future will give no medicine, will interest the people in and the choices of food and would have, I don't remember exactly the whole quote, but it was basically getting away from medicines, getting away from the doctors prescribing and, and cutting on people, but would actually interest them in uh, taking care of the body naturally. I love that. Give no the the no physician will give no medicine. Uh, wow, and I think we're going. We're we're involved with something that's going a long ways in in making that happen. There it is. You can okay. see the quote right there, Lee. Oh, awesome! The care of the human frame in diet and in the cause and prevention of disease. Thomas Edison. Fantastic! Fantastic! Yeah. Wow. What, what, what an amazing quote made a long, long time ago that is so apropos to, uh, to where we are today in our discovery of ASEA. Now, Dr. Bill, I know you've always been interested in, uh, in business as well. And, and how, how do you see how this could potentially be integrated from a business standpoint into what you do as, as a doctor? Uh, years and years ago, I studied under a fellow named Bob Proctor, who went on to be quite famous with a book and a movie called The Secret. And he talks about multiple sources of income. That was something that he promoted to protect ourselves from sudden 
changes in our economic climate or our own personal condition. And so Lee and I have always been interested as uh, entrepreneurial spirits in having a dental practice and having a publishing practice, having a authorships, teaching. Uh, we've all been involved in serving our patients and serving the public and other dentists. We both serve other dentists by being authors. And we've always believed in multiple sources of income. And periodically we would try some of the uh, products that would come about that looked interesting. We would try to make our way with some of the uh, offerings in the multi-level companies. And so this was not a foreign area for either one of us. We, we always enjoyed the idea that if you had a good product and you told people about it, that you could make a profit. And so um, to me, this is the perfect product for referral by word of mouth. When I look at something that I'm interested in, I can really share it well. I can believe in it. I can share it well. The, the ones that I can't sell well are the ones I don't believe in. And so with the strength of the testimonials that we have, I'm a total believer that this is a, a valid point and the research has backed it up. And so from a point of view of a medical doctor, a dentist, anybody in the health professions, they see it, they understand it, they can easily believe it. And then you have a lot of credibility by being a credential medical person. And so what I'm always doing is looking at my patients in the eye and I'll say, you know, every now and then something comes around that really can help you. And I, I know something that might be beneficial. If you want to look at it, I'll be glad to send you a, a video and uh, ask you for their cell phone number. And I've got a system I put together where I, I have links in my uh, notes section of my iPhone and I can put their cell phone number in and send them the uh, video amazingmolecules.net. Have you ever heard of that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. So Absolutely. when I send that out to them, I get a lot of people with, with positive feedback. And we, we, I try to meet people where they are. If they're nutritionally challenged, if they're uh, weight challenged, if they are uh, got some kind of a calamity in the medical realm, I try to meet them where they are and give them hope. And I say, this is something that might help you. you. You should look into it. And so I do that routinely day after day. And I'll do it on Facebook. I'll do it on uh, emails. I'll, I'll do it just talking to people in a, in a line somewhere if I'm waiting for something at the restaurant. And so what I find is the people that are open are open and people that are not open, they won't respond. So it's like you're sifting through talking to people about what you're excited about. And as long as you stay excited, you're going to grow your business. Well, that, that's great uh, advice. Uh, that's fantastic uh, advice. Well, you touched on uh, nutrients. Both you guys touched on nutrients. And, and I know ASEA is a company dedicated to cellular health. And I know that the flagship product that, that they first uh, discovered, right, and, and ultimately stabilized was the this redox signaling molecules. But since then, they have now produced a, uh, a gel that also contains the molecules in a concentrated strength. Uh, they have produced uh, like a super serum, uh, which is an even greater concentration. Uh, and they have uh, some other complementary uh, uh, items to help with uh, preparing the skin for the molecules and then also um, uh, uh, moisturizing the skin after the molecules. And, and recently, this past September, they released some new nutraceuticals. Um, what are your guys' feelings about uh, the nutraceutical line and how that, that might uh, complete the package, right? The cellular package, if you will? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the redox signaling molecules mechanism of action is to activate antioxidants. Well, if you don't have antioxidants available to activate, you've got a problem. And this isn't a zero, 100, it's not you either, you have none or you have 100. We all have, it's a continuum. And 
the, the thing I like about the, um, the, the formulations that you're uh, presenting is that the research behind them, the quality and the, and the um, sourcing of those provide the, the whole food, they're, they're not synthetic. You know, it's a whole food presentation. Well, that's, get, that's getting real parallel to what the body wants. I mean, if, if we could dump a back, tr a, a back up a dump truck of, uh, you know, leafy greens and, and you know, all, the, all these natural phytonutrients that are, we're supposed to be eating a colorful diet, if we could do that every day, you know, uh, maybe like we did uh, millennia ago, I don't know. But if, if we could do that, we'd be satisfied. But that just that's not in practicality today. And so, but the the blending of the strategy of being able to activate as well as to have the fix it guys show up, to, you know, with the labor and the materials to be able to do what it is they need to do to do the repair and the replace. Uh, that's a wonderful marriage. I, I think it's a very insightful addition to this. As far as the skin stuff is concerned, I you know I'm. I'm already beautiful. I don't know that I need anything more to help me with that regard. But I, I can tell you that I spray this stuff in my face and my eyes. Um, I, you know, I've got sores, uh, uh, you know, chronic sores on, on spots of my body that have, are now under control, and, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Dr. Bill, your thoughts? Yeah, uh, Lee, you've got that beautiful face, that, that glowing skin. <laughs> I think that's from all the cloud cover that's in Washington. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, you know, I had some of my best results from the uh, Renew 28 from some of the people that joined us. One of my uh, people that joined us recently is a naturopath and a nurse practitioner. And she worked in the emergency room for, you know, 20 years. And, and uh, she knows medicine. She works with uh, all the beauty products, Botox and Restylane and Carboxy and does a lot of things to beautify skin. And so I gave her a sample of the Renew 28. And in two weeks, she came back and said, I want to be part of this. That was the thing that sold her on joining us because she got more out of that than anything she knew from her professional experience. I mean, she's doing this for a living, making people beautiful and nothing she could do did as much as the Renew 28 for her, her own skin. So she's a believer and got rid of um, all kind of lichen planus and things that were on her chest. She said, I don't know what she had on her chest, but she told me that's what it was. So it was some rash on her chest that went away. And so I stress that she knows what she's talking about. Now, Another person drank the liquid and their digestive problems went away in just two weeks. She couldn't eat anything strange. She had no ability to eat uh, the fiery foods, you might call it, and greasy foods would just dissatisfy her bowels. You know, she would have IBS. So two weeks, she was totally able to eat everything that's grown and cooked in New Orleans. Creole food was easy. She went down and had a great visit. So I'm saying if, if these two uh, people that just joined our business as associates got that kind of response, then I can't imagine anybody not wanting to you know, be a part of it. So it's, it's your excitement and belief that, that really draws people in. And uh, I see it in these individuals and it makes me want to go out and tell somebody else that they too could possibly get over some of these things that are bothering them so, so profoundly. That, that's so that's correct. correct. And I think that's the best part for me and probably for all of us that are on tonight is, you know, we get paid so much in goosebumps and so often, you know, we get, we get the other part too, which is, which is awesome. And, and probably some of the best in the industry as far as the money goes. But uh, I'll tell you, the goosebump part of it is, uh, is a really big deal uh, for me, that's for sure. Well, guys, I know we're getting close to uh, the end of our time. Dr. Bill, did you want to say something? Uh, I just was going to point out, I'm looking forward to these uh, actinic keratosis on my hand to be finally 
gone. I go to the dermatologist every six months to get these things taken off so they don't turn into basal cell carcinomas and things. And, um, you know, I've got several of them that are gone after two months and I'm just going to wait till the six month checkup comes and see what they tell me if they can find them. I'm going to just look in her eyes and see if she found them again because I know she knows where they are. If they're yeah. gone, that'll be a good story. That'll be a great story. Absolutely great story. You know, you guys, I love, I love the part where I get to say the disclaimer, which is that uh, per the FDA, right, uh, only drugs can claim to cure, prevent, or treat any condition or disease. Uh, but I love being able to say that, that, that what we're providing people is the opportunity to have their bodies heal themselves. And that, to me, goes so far beyond medicine and the understanding of pharmaceuticals that I, I think it's as good as it gets. I, I, I think in the world, if we said, what if, what if we could uh, have sit back uh, or sat back years and years ago, right, and imagined, and especially you guys being, being doctors, imagine the what if we could create the perfect scenario to help the world in, uh, related to health but we also know it's related to, uh, uh, you know, at what's so for athletes and skin. We talked about skin. But if we could create the perfect, uh, the perfect invention, if you will, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't you guys say we, we found it? This is it? When, darn close. When, when Lee first showed this to me and I read about it and listened to the video on Amazing Molecules, I said, Lee, this is the God molecule. This is created for a purpose. And, it, and the purpose is to make what was created work even better. That's a great way to end, you guys. I, I, you know, it's been such an honor to have you guys here. And, and I know you're brand new. And I, I know we're going to see each other on the ASEA Highway. If not, uh, in a little while, we'll, we'll probably see you at convention next year in Las Vegas. So, gentlemen, thank you for taking time out of your, your afternoon to be with us and to share, uh, Dr. Lee, the personal story about your, your, uh, your amazing, beautiful wife and, and her improvements. We wish her the very, very best. And, and I know pretty soon you're going to be able to climb walls and jump over buildings, and, and you'll realize for yourself <laughs> just how great this is. And, Dr. Bill, thank, thanks for being with us. I know you guys are going to go out there and change the world. Thank you for Thank having me. Yeah, Thank yeah, you yeah. both. This was amazing. I'm, for once, I don't have any questions. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Yeah, and you know, I want to thank Lee for inviting me into this. One thing that the person that joined should always be thankful for is the one who invited them. Thank change you. their life. It'll change their life. It always seems that that's the most important thing is the lives you change when you invite people into things like this. I'm honored. Thank you. I'm so glad you did. There's, there's one thing about this, and that is there's a special light that is lit above a lot of us. And you can look around, and you can, when people get it, that light goes on, and that's, that's something that's easy to share. Oh, that's perfect. That's, that's perfect. I'm, I'm going to steal that one. I'm glad <laughs> the stop button didn't work. I'm, I would have been sick if we missed those last couple of statements. That was great. Thank you. Hold on. Yep. Okay, you're good, William. Did we do it, Jim? We did it. <laughs> we got it back. Good job. Good job. Wow. You know, that, that was pretty cool, right, guys? Hey, I want to issue a warning. Do not attempt to use the science you just experienced to educate others. Do not use the language you just heard. Uh, let somebody else be your expert and use, pick up your cell phone and make a cell call and call in an expert to do this on your behalf. The mistake we all make is when we decide that we're going to remember this stuff or memorize it and try to repeat it, don't make that mistake, you guys. I loved, uh, I love what Dr. Lee said about the mouthwash. 
you guys remember he says it's, it's indiscriminately killing all of the good and the bad bugs in our mouth. I believe you could probably build an entire business around just how having people understand that we can move that uh, and we can understand the biocidal effects of using ASEA instead of mouthwash, killing just the bad bugs. That's, that, that, that's a huge deal, right? Uh, it was great seeing Bethany and her improvements. And I want you guys to know that in two weeks from tonight, we're going to have Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee was part of making uh, uh, the introduction of ASEA to Dr. Lee. And it's a really great story. And we're going to share that with you in two weeks. We'll have Dr. Lee on. And Dr. Lee is an MD. And then I also loved what Dr. Bill said about every now and then something comes along, right? Every now and then something comes along. You didn't hear him go into the science when he brings it up to people, right? Something comes along that helps people significantly. So meet them where they are. Those were his words. And that's, that's such great advice. Um, people that are open will get it. People that aren't won't. And so be excited. He said, just be excited. And, 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 and just say every now and then something comes along, meet them where they are. You guys, I wanna remind you finally to think bigger. Think bigger, what does that mean? Think differently. I want you to move yourselves or thinking about moving yourself from being an observer and, and maybe a very limited participant in what we're doing here to becoming an actual full-fledged, full participant, declaring your involvement. And, and become a true partner. And, and, and I want you to also realize that uh, who I am, who we are at any given moment, creates our experience. And that goes back to what Dr. Bill said about being excited. So if our energy is high, we're going to attract people with higher energy. So become the frequency that matches our desired outcome. I'll leave it with that. Jim, thanks. It was a great night. You bet. Who do we have next week? We have Mr. Sean Burke, and we're going to hear the athletic side of what these molecules are doing in people's lives, and we're going to have a lot of fun with Sean. And I believe we're going to have Paula Logas back. Uh, Yay, hopefully, Paula, what a camera. She just hit the rank of diamond today. All right, Paula. So if Paula's on, congratulations. Her story is one of the most uh, moving stories of not only health, but also financial blessing. And I can't wait to find, we had her on a couple of months ago, but her, her video wasn't working. So we're going to hopefully have that working by next Friday. So, you know, uh, we also have a couple other testimonials as well, but Sean is amazing to watch his story. He is an ex army ranger. Um, and how ASEA and his athletics helped get him through what got him through his is rather remarkable and what he's been able to do athletically at his young age is rather remarkable we are going to try to get a, a couple guest uh surprises on next week so a couple guest athletes so we hopefully will see you all here next friday at seven o'clock central five o'clock pacific and eight o'clock eastern so thank you guys thanks jim thanks, Bye, thanks. Everybody. you guys uh, righty.